Hi, my name is Mort Chatterjee. I'm one half of Chatterjee and Lal. And this presentation is part of our Culture Bug series. Our presenter is Aditya Ruya, an independent scholar and researcher whose area of expertise is the art of Nat Dwara and painted photography from the 19th century. We do hope you enjoy the presentation. Thank you. Our concerns this evening are the, about the social life of female photography in India in the 19th and early 20th century. Photography came to India in the, in the 1840s, almost immediately after its invention in Europe. Much, much has been said and written about colonial pho photography and how it was used by the colonial state as a means of documenting a people who tried to understand and into in inverted commas, civilize to suit their own hegemonic purposes. In the process, they created stereotypes and propaganda about the Indian subject that suited their ends. Our concerns this evening diverge from such a reading to understanding how photography played out and operated in the Indic society. Undoubtedly, photography records and stores for posterity, much like it was meant to originally. However, it has privileged historians to understand the social situation of women in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. Using semiotics, historians are able to unravel marks and symbols contained in each artwork. These interpretations have been discussed along with each photograph. The mundane promise of sweet memories as framed by photo equipment manufacturers is a far cry when faced with the realities of the business of image making, as understood through the nuanced lens of these photographs. Realities of commerce, professional exigencies, rivalries for attention and precedence within the Zenana or portrayals of family wealth for the sake of alliances played key roles in the production of these images. Much like the intent that, the, that privileged the production of miniature painting for elitist consumption in pre-colonial India. Photography, however, allowed for larger democratization of the same intentions in a wider section of the social milieu. I have not included black and white photography, but another genre that is painted photographs for this talk, since this category is not discussed frequently by most photo historians. Painting a photograph is primarily an Indic response, a marriage between traditional art of miniature painting and international technology. In the Indian context, it helped increase the indexicality of the subject, thereby empowering the subject with a special locus, playing a descriptive role and enhancing the black and white photographs reflection of the physical world through the addition of color. Often due to enlargement, the original photograph was blurred, necessitating redrawing and revisualizing the image. Painting helped emphasize the elements not prominent in the photograph, but of importance either to the sitter or the, or the artist. Oil painting on a photograph was sometimes used to give the impression of an actual oil painting, thereby using the economies offered by technology. <clears throat> Photography allowed artists to achieve a greater likeness of the sitter. Fusionomic features such as the face and hands that were the exposed parts of the body were often depicted photographically or with a photographic aesthetic. This was necessitated due to the lack of training by traditional artists or due to ex exigencies of speed. Artists from Nadwara have produced an entire category of devotional memories 
using this technique. Urbanization in the latter part of colonial rule led to a great greater alienation of marginalized women such as performers, widows and singers. In the earlier social structure, although segregated, they, in their rural milieu, they did perform socially inclusive tasks such as temple dancers, kirtankars, that is singers of devotional songs or even mourners. This traditional role was denied them in the urban environment, forcing them into other professions. Photographs of women are fewer th than men because they were restricted by parda rules of the Zenana or joint family units. In the 19th century, parda applied to Hindu and Muslim women alike. Ostensibly put into place to preserve the honor, these institutions existed for the sole purpose of control of property and progeny. With the coming of photography, some of these rules could be subverted, leading to greater freedom and less control by male-dominated social institutions. It also allowed for more adventurous and authoritative women to bend rules, thereby stepping out of their seclusion as it were. Unlike contemporary times, puberty and not age determined the passage of a woman from childhood into womanhood. Through this talk, we will look into the sequestered life of the Zenana along with other social and nuanced arrangements for women in the 19th century Indic society. So this is a carte de visite of a Muslim courtesan. Uh, circa 1880 from the erstwhile central provinces, perhaps Lucknow. This places the sitter in an urban setting, attested further by the large palace visible through the window. It speaks of her status and the kind of palaces she frequents. Her cockish countenance with the little finger on the chin is a suggestion of invitation a trope that carried on in cinema well into the 1960s and 70s. The woman is well and traditionally clad, while the quantum of jewellery she is adorned with speaks of her means and the means of her patrons. An album of such CDVs was carried by messengers for viewing by Nawabs and rich landlords in the area. A patron would then send a gift of money or jewellery to the woman he would like to invite or be invited by. If she accepted the invitation, she would keep the gift and send back a, a, a beetle leaf as a token of acceptance. An invitation was not necessarily sexual in nature, but the beginning of companionship, if compatible. These women were keepers of auditory and visual arts and respected within society. It was the puritanical nationalistic aesthetic built on asceticism, frugality, abstention and religion that vilified Avadhi culture. Supported by popular cinema, a prudish national consciousness developed in the early years of the 20th century. Lack of patronage for the arts drove a lot of these keepers of culture to fend for themselves through licentious means. A Pardayat or Paswan from the Jaipur Zainana, circa 1870. Ram Singh's journey into photography began with his meeting Mare in 1864. Photographers tended to be itinerant in those days, carrying equipment and props with them. A Nenital address does not mean that the photograph was taken in Nenital. T. Mare was closely associated with Ram Singh of Jaipur. In this example, the woman is seated on a chair set on a makeshift platform covered with a cotton dari. 
unlike the previous photograph that had an elaborate carpet. There is an informality in the setting suggesting a makeshift studio in the Zainana. Her T-shaped tika suggests a Hindu denomination. Women of the Zainana did not frequent outdoor studios and Pardas studios were set up for their convenience. Another giveaway of her high standing in the Zainana are the gold ornaments on her feet which had to be presented by a Maharaja or Raja as a sign of favour. Ram Singh too, known for his modern views, photographed a number of female subjects from his Zainana and examples are on display at the City Palace Museum in Jaipur. But none of them are of his Rani's. Exposure time in early photography could vary from two to four minutes, which leads us to wonder by what means the pet spaniel was made to sit still or is he a studio prop? Paswans of Sardar Singh Zainana As is well known in the elite polygynous Rajput households of Rajasthan, apart from Rajput Ranis, that is queens, who were formerly wedded wives of a ruler, the rulers also maintained conjugally oriented relationships with concubines who were drawn from relatively inferior and non-Rajput castes. Like the general hierarchical order of courtly societies, the elite Rajput households maintained a hierarchy in the ranks of concubines. In this system, the category of women denoted by the term khawas was lowest, followed by those known as pardayat, and finally those women referred to as paswan occupied the highest ranks among concubines. The two paswans appear to be almost identical at first glance, but a close examination shows a nuanced hierarchy between while both women wear similar head ornaments bearing portraits of Sardar Singh, the Tanmanya neck ornament also with portraits vary in size and therefore weight. The woman on the left has a larger Tanmanya than the one on the right. Notice that the number of bangles on her wrist vary. The woman on the left sports more rings than the one on the right and her stance suggests greater authority. The right leg of the woman on the left is extended outwards, extending more, exhi sorry, exhibiting more anklets than the woman on the right. She also seems to be older than the one in, on the right. However, the feet ornament are in silver and not gold as in the previous image, alluding to a junior position in the royal Zainana. Wearing of portraits was a statement of fealty to the person in the portrait. It was, ado it was adopted from this colonial system of hegemony. Such displays of hierarchy and power were common in royal households. This painted photograph performs the role of establishing these layers of authority without much, without which governing a household of a few hundred members would have been an impossible task. Paswan from the Jodhpur Zainana again by Govindram Udairam of Jaipur. A contemporary portrait to the earlier one, this has the photographer identified and is much smaller in size. Jodhpur was a progressive state which may have allowed male photographers to take photographs. These photos have been taken against a backdrop of a balcony, probably in a makeshift studio within the Zainana. The chair in both the portraits is the same and the jewellery of the women seem to be of standard issue. Notice the handkerchiefs so prominently displayed are exactly the same. One is tempted to think 
that the photograph may sorry one is tempted to think that the pho that photography may have been a form of elite amusement were, were these images meant for the male gaze or symbols of authority and favor within the zenana is always a question that looms large two women circa 1900 This theatrical picture begs to understand the relationship between the two women. One wonders if they were the wives of the same person or sister-in-laws or mother and daughter. Both have the signs of married women. The older of the two stands behind the young younger in animated suspension in an act of protecting her. Their identity shows a middle social hierarchy possibly from a vaishya that is banya or trading family of means the use of silver bangles and toenail ornaments allude to this shot in a studio following a formulaic strategy of a table and flowers along with drapery it nevertheless in invites the viewer to enter the proscenium stage through a play of depth and brackets with arabesque design in the forefront clearly the pic this picture is born out of a studio visit the sitters had a choice of carpets and the other one still lurks in the background the painter has embellished the picture with a chandelier which probably never existed in the original photograph framing the picture in a yellow border gives it a miniature painting like feel woman daughter daughter in law and daughter this photograph is a product of a calcutta studio of a migrant family from bikaner the second half of the 19th century saw migrants carry their own culture and customs to their adopted homelands of calcutta and bombay retaining roots in their towns of bikaner and shekhavati where they built impressive havelis that speak of their success in commercial cities jute tea or cotton and opium had become the new cash cows with the introduction of commercial sea sea routes inhabiting bara bazar in calcutta and kalba devi in bombay the the so called native towns they began as house brokers and sarafs money lenders to established trading houses the women in the house were the keepers of their culture here you see the matriarch flanked by her daughter in law completely veiled and and possibly her unmarried daughter seated on the right the future of the family the grandson is firmly held on to by the grandmother the westernized studio foot backdrop seems to evoke the aspirations of the family while retaining the traditional sartorial tastes the traditional the colonial metropolises became melting pots for multicultural exchanges the dowry circa 1930 the young girl's photograph from bikaner about 10 or 12 would probably have circulated among families of equal financial and social status in search of a suitable groom marriages were alliances in trading communities and insurance for the vagaries of trade and a means to retain control of property and fungible resources within the community rich banker families from bikaner and shekhavati migrated full of aspirations their abandoned havelis have now become tourist destinations and hotels 
a number of pictures of marriageable young women adorned with much jewellery have been in the market. This overload of jewellery is an allusion to the means of her family and the dowry she has the potential to carry to the fa groom's family. During the lean periods, fa families related by marriage helped each other, especially to pay debt. Right marriage, piety and credit were, were central to basic operations of the family as a unit. The studio background is interesting in as much as it comprises of two backdrops, the left half with the, ra the inside of a mansion and the right giving the illusion of a garden. Both these backdrops speak of aspirations and possessions. This interesting memory of an unusual marriage from Shekhavati shows a young bridegroom of about 10 simultaneously marrying two girls barely able to hold their bridal wear. The one on the right seems to be a year or so older than the one on the left, probably sisters as there are only two men who appear to be the fathers of the groom and brides. Marrying two girls simultaneously seems to have been an insurance against high mortality of the 1920s, though there was no insurance for the brides against the death of the groom. Dual marriage was not common, but one did hear of this practice. Child widows led dreadfully lonely lives, harassed by in-laws and generally considered unlucky. A number of them were relegated to widow homes in Varanasi and Haridwar, depending on charity and sometimes prostitution. The father of the groom, along with the groom and his brother, on the right, sport a Vaishnav Tilak, that is forehead mark, of the Ramanuj Sampradai sect, while the girl's father does not wear a Sampradayak mark, and the two other youngsters sport normal tikas. Armed guards were a common feature in Rajasthan during this period. The hanging lamps are an artistic device rather than a part of the photograph and hang in a rather incong incongruous manner. An actress or performer, circa 1930. A picture that challenges the norms of 1930s society and dares the viewer to ascribe many interpretations as to her profession. There is a sense of erotic and sensual in her pose and placement of the body. The harmonium by Marden and Company placed strategically is a device to invite the viewer to understand the music and performance based profession that the woman may be engaged in. Her hybrid clothes too suggest a performer. Interestingly, she continues to wear her shoes even when in a supine position. The capitalist economy of later colonial rule that saw the rise of large urban centers changed the rules of engagement by male clients from one of patronage to, to a more market-driven one. Sexual entertainment was not the only skill required of these elite class of entertainers. Proficiency in music, dance, theatre and sometimes the fine arts allowed them to create a stable clientele unlike the lower rung of prostitutes that let themselves out by the hour. This made for a certain amount of economic freedom and gave them the ability to choose their clients. Compared to image one, this entertainer has a far more direct and candid stance, eschewing layers of sartorial elegance and re refraining from any form of social niceties. A symbol of modern urban culture. In all probability, this may have served the purpose of a lobby card for the vernacular theatre through which the protagonist may have 
popularized herself. In conclusion, the union of painting and photography is another example of osmosis of many cultures, numerous technologies and myriad philosophies coexisting under the banner of India.